It's Monday, and you're with Bob McAvoy, right here on the Semper Reformata podcast. Well, good morning, good morning, and welcome. It's Monday morning, the 13th of June, 2022. And this is Bob McAvoy with the weekly look at what's happening and a little bit of discussion from a Christian viewpoint. And look, if you want to reach different conclusions than me, that's absolutely fine. One of the difficulties, I suppose, of doing a weekly news roundup is that the news is no longer actually news. So this week, looking back, I want to think just a little bit about the Queen's Platinum Jubilee that passed us by a week or so ago. Well, I say passed us by, what I really meant was it passed me by. I didn't join in any of it, and I'm going to explain why. But first of all, let me ask, what did you make of it all? Overall, well, here in Northern Ireland, there were street parties and there were special events, and we had members of the royal family strolling round Bangor, and to the surprise of many, Belfast City Hall was actually lit up in red, white and blue. Even the leader of Sinn Féin sent a message of congratulations to the monarch. And the whole country had a four-day holiday, which, let's be honest, everyone was grateful for. Many churches were offered small grants by their local councils to facilitate catering for celebrations, and lots of churches joined in. Some of them seemed to have life-sized pictures of the Queen, so that people could have photographs taken with red, white and blue bunting and so on. We even had an event here in Ballygoyen with a choir and children's entertainment. But of course the focus of the celebrations nationally were in England, where a grand tattoo was held at Windsor Castle and a series of events in London, including a jubilee service of thanksgiving at St Paul's Cathedral. And on Saturday evening, the party at the palace featured entertainers and guests from all over the world. Now... It was that event that spoke loudest about the true nature of the modern monarchy in Britain. This country, like most other Western nations, has a national religion. And if you were watching the party at the palace, you would know that that national religion is not Christianity. In fact, that national religion is an institutionalised paganism. That is being promoted by the great and the good, the influencers and the government, even the supposedly Christian established church, or at least the leaders of that church. And the media are fanatically evangelical about its message. And that religion is not confined to these shores. It's a worldwide religion, with its temple in Davos in Switzerland, where its synod meet once a year. It's Gaia worship. It's the adoration of the earth, the exaltation of the created globe, above the needs of humanity. Humanity created in the image of the one true God and given a special dignity over all of creation. And like all pagan religions, it is especially rebellious against the true God, the creator God. And it hates everything that bears his image. It hates everything to do with him. It thinks of mankind as a plague upon the earth, destroying the planet as a cancer which must be rooted out so that the planet can live, and it is blatantly open and honest about those ideals. It proclaims loudly that there are far too many people on this earth, and that the population of the earth must be drastically reduced so that the planet can live, so that wildlife can flourish, and its General Assembly at Davos openly debates and plans how such ends can be achieved. As one social media philosopher commented, the carbon footprint that they want to reduce is you. Well, at the party at the palace, both Prince Charles, a long-term devout believer in this pagan religion, and his son Prince William spoke. Charles spoke about his mother and praised her for her reign. William, on the other hand, spoke about climate change. One wonders what his grandmother would have spoken about in such circumstances. We've heard in several of her recent Christmas messages how she speaks warmly of Jesus who is her Saviour and Lord, but we heard nothing of this from William. Given the opportunity to craft his own speech, William instead promoted the pagan religion of the Malthusians, 
the climate change cult. And what was even more creepy was the image projected onto the walls of Buckingham Palace. It was the ghoulish face of the high priest of the population alarmists, Sir David Attenborough, the man who, in a TV series, openly described humanity as a plague destroying the planet. William Windsor may one day be king, defender of the faith, a Malthusian who is thoroughly initiated into the climate alarmist religion. And by the way, he's also a hypocrite. He's one of those climate change warriors of the Davos set who preach global warming to all the rest of us, to the plebs, and who whines about our carbon footprint because we drive a petrol or diesel car and because we heat our homes with oil while he flies around in a private jet or in a private helicopter. As someone remarked on Twitter, William's speech on climate change was given to the audience at a concert that had the carbon footprint of a small nation. And what about Elizabeth herself? At her coronation back in 1953, she took a solemn oath. I'm going to read part of that oath to you. The Archbishop asked, Will you, to the utmost of your power, maintain the laws of God and the true profession of the gospel? Will you, to the utmost of your power, maintain in the United Kingdom the Protestant Reformed religion established by law? To this, and to other questions concerning her headship of the Church of England, the Queen replied, All this I promise to do. Now, did she keep that promise? Did she, to the utmost of her power, maintain the laws of God and the true profession of the Gospel? And the obvious answer is no, she most certainly did not. Her 70 years have not been glorious for Britain. They have been years of gradual decline into shame and into immorality, and they certainly have not been honouring to God. The law of God says thou shalt not kill, and she gave royal assent to laws permitting babies to be killed. The law of God says you shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. But yet she gave royal assent to homosexual so-called marriage. I could go on and on. Some people will argue that she is a constitutional monarch and that she had no choice but to give royal assent to those bills, for to do otherwise would provoke a constitutional crisis. But I say that the law of God applies to her as much as to anyone else, and like the rest of us, she must obey God rather than men, and that one day she will give an account for every time she signed a bill into law that violated the law of God and broke her coronation oath. Numbers 30 and verse 2 says if a man vows a vow to the Lord or swears an oath to bind himself by a pledge, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. To swear a solemn oath before the Lord is to enter into a covenant with the Lord. It's an extremely serious matter. It's like taking marriage vows. They are inviolable until death. Now, my opinion is simply this, that the Queen is a covenant breaker. Now you can disagree with that if you want. But Ecclesiastes tells us that when you vow a vow to God, do not delay in paying it, for God has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you vow. It is better that you should not vow than that you should vow and not pay. Perhaps it is because the Queen has not kept covenant with the Lord that the work of her hands, her nation and her family are falling apart, and that's a serious matter. James 4 and 17 says, So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. And lastly then, how much did all this cost, this jamboree of sycophantic grovelling at the throne of man? Well, the Daily Record, and I admit the Daily Record is not probably the most conservative of papers. But the Daily Record tells us that the money for the event is coming from several different revenue streams and that some won't be happy to read that a big chunk comes directly from the UK taxpayer. In other words, us. Chancellor Rishi Sunak has set aside 28 million of taxpayers' money for this four-day event, according to the government's March 2021 budget. And there's 22 million more of National Lottery funding being made available for this bank holiday. 
Now, when inflation and rising food and fuel costs are pressing hard upon the average family, I ask, is this a sensible way to spend money? Here's some more money facts. The royal family got an increase of £18.1 million to £87.5 million. MPs got an increase of 2200 per year to 84144 At the other end of the scale, a 17-year-old worker got an increase of 19p an hour to £4.81 an hour. And pensioners got an increase of £5.56 per week. OK, admittedly some people will counter-argue that the Jubilee celebrations will have brought in billions of pounds in tourist revenue. But sure, who knows? Well, I'd no interest in Elizabeth's Jubilee celebrations. I'm just a curmudgeon. So I just think that events like this are bread and circuses to keep the masses happy, while the government impose more and more unjust laws and regulations to give us a feel-good factor, while our tyrannical Secretary of State, for example, presides over the death of thousands of unborn babies and calls it his moral duty. And what a good time for the government to bury bad news. Yet the Bible does tell us that we are to fear God and honour the King, that we are to be submissive to rulers and authorities, that we are to pray for them, that supplications and prayers and intercessions and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and for all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. But none of those commands preclude us from calling them out when they err, holding them to account for when they act in an ungodly fashion. And we need to remember that ultimately our first allegiance is to the one who is the King of Kings, the Lord over all, King Jesus. Well, I'm likely to be off to the Tower of London soon. So if you don't hear from me, you'll know where to find me. Well, links to all these stories are available so you can read and research them for yourself. Follow the web link in the episode notes to www.semper-reformata.com to learn more. Today's grace gem is from William Plummer. Plummer writes, Christ's kingdom is universal. It includes all worlds, all creatures, all causes. Nothing in heaven, nothing in earth is outside of it. His saints praise him, the angels adore him, the devils are subject to him. The king's heart is in his hands and he turns it wherever he will. His kingdom rules over all. His kingdom is supreme. Nothing can shake it. Worms cannot spit their venom so as to reach the stars in their course, nor can tiny mortals reach the person or the power of our glorious Emmanuel. And let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, you've told us to pray for those who rule over us. Our prayer for our rulers is that they might come to know you as their Lord and Saviour, that they might repent of their sins and turn from their wickedness. Forgive them, we pray, for their mismanagement of our national affairs, for the economic poverty that they have caused by their lack of judgment. And we pray for churches, we pray for the visible church and for the leaders of those churches. And we pray that those leaders, pastors, ministers may be faithful to your word and to your kingly rule and obedient to your call. Help us to follow you faithfully, to be good witnesses for you. And should you come or call this very day, may we be found walking in a manner that is worthy of our Lord. Well, that's all for now. Links for all these stories are on the website semper-reformata.com and there's a link to that website in the episode notes. Catechism class is tomorrow, Tuesday at one o'clock and there should be a sermon podcast on Saturday. So don't be discouraged. Let's keep watching, keep praying. Far greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world.
Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this episode of the podcast, please help to make it better known by opening the podcast app on your phone or mobile device. Then, search for The Semper Reformata Podcast. Subscribe and give it a 5-star rating. See you next time.